How's it going everyone? It's Chow here and today we are going to talk a little bit about the basics of the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. So this is going to be an extremely straightforward basic version that's generally taught in introductory biology courses, but if you all like me to give an, a more in-depth version of the Krebs cycle, uh, feel free to tell me and I will go ahead and do that. But this is the bare bones basic version that is really simple and really straightforward. So we're just looking at the big picture over here. So let's get started on the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle occurs after glycolysis and after pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction, so that pyruvate oxidation step that we discussed in an earlier lecture. And what happens is you end up with that molecule of acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA then combines with another molecule called uh, oxaloacetate via uh, the reaction of a type of enzyme, and it forms citrate. And then it goes through this reaction uh, called the Krebs cycle, where you basically create some stuff, and then you make some stuff, and then you remove some stuff, and then ultimately you recreate oxaloacetate, which can then restart the reaction again. But that's more or less trivial, so this, let's just look at some of the goals and important aspects of the Krebs cycle. Basically, the goal of the Krebs cycle is four different very important points. The first one is basically you're turning that acetyl-CoA into carbon dioxide molecules. So each acetyl-CoA produces two carbon dioxides uh, via decarboxylation reactions. Uh, another thing is that you're going to be making one ATP from ADP per acetyl-CoA. So one acetyl-CoA in the Krebs cycle will actually end up making uh, each acetyl-CoA, excuse me, will end up making one single ATP molecule. It may also be GTP, which is just a, a side note here, so you might see this being shown as either ATP being made or GTP being made, so one or the other. Um, but anyway, GTP is kind of an ATP equivalent, um, so it doesn't really matter that much for the scope of an intro course. So again, you're turning that one acetyl-CoA and then you're reacting it with a bunch of different molecules and different enzymes, and one of the products is you're creating two CO2 molecules, you're making one ATP molecule, as well as three NADH molecules. Yes, so you're going through the Krebs cycle over here, and you're actually going to end up reducing NAD plus into NADH with those certain intermediate products. And then, last but not least, you also actually end up making an FADH molecule. So you have an FAD that becomes reduced into FADH. Now, if you think back to that pyruvate oxidation section, you'd realize that each glucose molecule ends up actually making two acetyl-CoAs. So we actually have to double everything over here, which ends up something like this. So we actually have two acetyl-CoAs that are going to be going in to the Krebs cycle. So what that means is that you actually get a net of two acetyl-CoAs going in, which means it's four Cl2. Remember, we had two for each one, so multiply by, by that by two, and it's four Co2. Next, we can look at the ATP molecules, or, or in some cases you could say it's GTP. But ATP over here, one ATP per acetyl-CoA. So if we have two acetyl-CoA, that's two ATP. And something similar happens with the NADH as well as the FADH2s. So remember, for every acetyl-CoA, you have three NADH and one FADH2, which means that if you're actually running this with two moles right, of acetyl-CoA, you're going to end up with six NADH and two FADH2. So if you want to look at the totality of everything, in the cytosol with glycolysis, you're going to be creating two pyruvate molecules. So through glycolysis, you're turning glucose, one molecule of glucose, into two pyruvate molecules. In addition, you create two NADH molecules and two ATP molecules. Now if we look at the pyruvate oxidation reaction, you're turning that two pyruvates into two acetyl-CoA as well as two CO2s. Remember, one CO2 for each acetyl-CoA, so two acetyl-CoA, two CO2. Similarly, you're going to be making two NADH. Remember, one NADH per pyruvate or per acetyl-CoA, and that means two of these means there's two NADH. 
And then if we look at the Krebs cycle again, you're making a total of four CO2 with the two acetyl-CoA's that are created over here. You're going to also be making six NADH as well as two ATP molecules or GTP molecules. And you're going to also be making two FADH2 molecules. So if you sum everything up, one molecule of glucose originally through glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, and the Krebs cycle will give you a total of six CO2, 10 NADH, four ATP, and two FADH2 molecules. So there you go. That's the basic straightforward version of the Krebs cycle. If you all want me to make a more in-depth series where we're looking at each individual step within the Krebs cycle, I can do that. But for now, I think this is uh, more or less sufficient. So I hope you all found this useful and I will see you in the next video. And as always, best of luck studying everyone.